Get your Detroit DIY apparel today. Check out the store in the link provided in the description. Thank you. Today we're going to trim out this new construction window. What we have here, the 2x4 is exposed, so we need to put some one by in here to case this out and then install our case molding to cover up the edges. Should be fairly straightforward and, and pretty simple project. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Dierdorf and this is Detroit DIY. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is get a measurement across the top and across the bottom and get our one bys cut to length. Then we'll have to take them to the table saw and rip them down, but let's get them cut to length first. Forty-eight and a quarter. Forty-eight and a quarter. We'll get them cut. I've got these cut down and ready to go. I don't even need to rip these down. I had no idea that they were going to sit in here just perfect. I mean, I, I can't ask for anything more. These are sitting in here really nice. And I'm not sure about the top one. I'm going to have to nudge it out a little bit, but it's going to fit really nice too. I'm liking that. I'm going to put some nails in it. Now what I need to do is get my measurements from here to here and get those cut and put in. Thirty four and three eighths. Thirty four and five eighths. A little difference. Now I have my side pieces cut length and hopefully the width is good if it was good here it should be here we'll see how those are going to fit in should be a little snug I'm hoping for a little snug it's 
like that. Looks good, I like it. It's in a little bit too far here. So I'm gonna nudge this out. Get these nice and flush right here so the trim sits on them good. Same thing down here. That's good to nail. We need to put the nails in on a slight angle and the reason for that is they just bite better. It's harder for an angled nail to pull out than it is for an angled nail. And they even do so on the foot of the nailer. Let's take a closer look. So as you can see the foot of the nailer is angled. So if you put that flat on the surface the nail is going in on an angle. That is what they intended you to do, not necessarily to nail it straight. In some situations you have to, but you are always better off to nail it on an angle. It will hold better. Kind of got lucky when I bought these. They didn't have any 8 foot 1 by 6s. They only had 1 by 5s. And I'll have to say it's the first time I've seen 1 by 5s. And there are stickers on this material that say made in Sweden. First time I've actually seen that. So I got lucky. I knew that I had the thickness of the 2 by 4, the finished wall, and that I could see a little bit of that builder board when this window was installed. So I was hoping you know that these would be just a little extra wide however I can't complain about this they're just fitting in perfect this one's just going to be too tight I'm going to have to go trim it down a little bit the upper board here is on a slight angle it's no big deal I can caulk the seam it's obviously going to have a little gap at the top This time it's going to fit nice. Good to nail. I got a couple nails that didn't set all the way. I'm going to go ahead and take care of them right now. Problem is, is while I'm recording, I leave the air compressor off so that it's not kicking on, and sometimes I run a little low on air. So sometimes my nails don't always set. With all my nails set, I'm going to go ahead 
and get a little bit of wood putty in them and get those holes filled up. I just like to use my finger and I try not to make a big mess. I just press it in the hole really good and tight and wipe away the excess. It's less sanding. And this stuff is a lot easier to sand too if you do it in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes after you put it in instead of like waiting overnight or two or three days to do it. This stuff gets hard. I'm going to start with this top piece of trim. I just trimmed out my glass sliding door and discovered that some of that trim was completely horrible. And it wasn't horrible when I bought it, but where I store it here at my cottage, it's really hot in that shed. And man, that stuff just moved everywhere. It turned into a nightmare for me. These pieces look like they're going to be pretty good, so I'm hopeful that we're not fighting any trim. I'm going to use my tea bevel, and I'm going to come right up in here and get this angle close out to the edge as I can. And then I'm going to tighten the nut. And now I'm going to take my saw set pro and I'm going to use the double miter side and come in like this and get my miter angle. Let's take a closer look. So as you can see, when I come up against the stop, it is beyond the scale. It's really close to a 45, but a little bit beyond. So we're going to cut this at a 44 and a half. If you haven't seen the Sawset Pro, I have some videos out. These are excellent tools. Um, I'll put a link in the description to their YouTube channel, Sawset Pro Tools. And I'll also put a link in the description to their website if you'd like to get one of these for yourself. With that angle cut, I'm going to go ahead and hold it up here. And I'm just going to scribe me a line right here where I need to cut the other side and then figure out my angle. And what I'm doing is I'm just scribing me a line right on this very inside edge right here. Now I'm going to do the same thing, set my T-bevel in here. The angle looks pretty much identical, but we're going to check it anyway on the double miter scale. And it is another 44 and a half. I'm going to go get that cut. Now that this piece is cut, I'm going to tack it on with one nail right in the middle so that I can manipulate it however I may need to manipulate it. I just need to make sure that I'm lined up perfectly on my edges. So I've put that nail near the bottom so that it can kind of act like a teeter-totter. It'll allow me to pull it into place where I need to. This trim does have a little arch to it, but it's not horrible. I have a small piece of trim right here with the same angle cut on it. And I just want to make sure that I'm in the right place. And that looks pretty good. I have the same angle on this side. They're both 44 and a half right here. And that also looks good. So now I'm going to go cut this identical angle, the 44 and a half on the side piece and get this angle cut on it. So now with my angle cut on this side, 
I'm going to set it up there, get everything lined up really good, and do the same thing at the bottom of the sill, mark my trim where I want to cut it. This piece of trim is also a little bit wonky. Now I need to do the same thing. Take my T-bevel in the corner. Get my angle. Go to the double miter side of my Sawset Pro. And I'm looking at the same thing, 44 and a half degrees. So now that I'm happy with this corner, what I want to do is this top piece of trim I want to bring it down exactly where I want it flush with the case that I just put inside the window and put one nail in it. Now the piece that I've just cut I'm going to go ahead and get that in here get it set up real nice I'm going to go ahead and put two nails at the top of this. And an additional nail at the top of this. I don't have enough air. They're not setting all the way. So at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and cut this trim angle at the top the 44 and a half get it marked determine the bottom but I'm not going to install it yet and then I'm going to go ahead and get this bottom one cut and that will be the next one to go on kind of similar to this one I have my angle cut on this other side piece and we are just going to set it in place this one is up too high so I need to pull it down and I'm just going to get these two sitting together where they need to be and make sure I'm happy with everything and that looks really good so I'm going to pull this one into place and put one nail right in the top the reason I don't like to just put a bunch of nails in is because if there's an issue and I need to take this off and, and adjust my angle or you know God forbid I set my saw wrong. That happens sometimes. I just like to be able to save that piece of trim. This piece of trim's being a little stubborn because it's got a bow to it. So when I pull it down and I put the nail in it, it actually just kind of springs back up. So what I want to do is shoot a nail down in an angle like this so that it will hold it into place better. And just like that it held it there perfect now I'm going to do the same thing at that bottom corner I'm going to go ahead and get this piece of bottom trim set in there and I'm going to get that piece nailed in place so this bottom is going to be the last piece that I put in so I'm actually going to cut it slightly long 
so that I can work it into position. It's not so much the angle that's going to be the issue. This SawSet Pro is giving me the exact angle. However, if you mess up the length, then the angle is not going to seem right. I have both angles cut on this trim now. I'm going to get it set in here where I like it. Get a nail in it. So this piece of trim is a little bit wonky. So I'm going to nail it as I go. As you can see it needs to be pulled back down here some. But it has other issues leading up. A nail didn't pop there. This trim fought me the whole way. It's just got a curve in it that's a little hard to deal with. And in dealing with that, it caused a gap to open in my corner. It's an even gap, so it just means that the trim has moved too far away. And the nice thing is about trim nails is you can manipulate them. So if I get in here and I give that a push, a good push, I can push that back pretty tight. I have my bottom piece cut. It is slightly too long, I hope. So I'm going to set it in here and see what we've got. I have this end held into place. And now I'm going to remark this flush with this piece of trim. And my original mark was good. So I'm just going to go take this little bit off and we'll get this one in. I've adjusted the length on this piece of trim to where I've got it fitting really nice. And this is a pretty straight piece of trim, so I don't think I'll have any issues like I did with this one. What I want to do is just get it lined up down here and put one nail in it once I get happy with this corner's alignment. Now I'm going to do the same thing down here. Just come get this corner lined up how I want it. Pushed into place. Seems to be doing that pretty good on its own. And one nail. Now I'm just going to go ahead and finish nailing these couple of nails every 8-10 inches, something like that, is more than enough. Always remember to put them in on a little bit of an angle and alternate your angles to help hold them in place better. And that completes the installation of the case molding. Mo some windows, I can't say most, you would have a sill down here. The sill would come out just as wide as this trim and the trim would dead end into that sill and then you would have a piece of trim similar to this oriented upside down underneath that sill. Because of the size of this room and the fact that it's small, we've decided that we don't want a sill in here and nothing protruding from the wall. So once I get all my wood putty in, get these holes filled up, I'll give it just 20 or 30 minutes and then I'm going to sand it. Now that all the wood putty has filled up the nail holes, let's take a closer look at these corners. This window has drastically changed the view of this room and this is why I'm having a hard time filming right here because this is what you see with all the light coming in that window. 
And of course Oliver's here to help me out too. This is the corner that I had the slight gap open up on. And as you can see, the gap is even all the way across. It's not like it's wide at one side and touching at the other. So the angle is good, but what happened was in my manipulation of this trim to get it to go straight, it just kind of moved away a little bit. And I might tap on these a little bit and try to get them a little tighter, but that is a very, very thin line and caulk will fill that in just fine. Here is our bottom seam, which turned out much better. There is no line there whatsoever other than the cut wood and maybe a little bit of this is sticking out slightly further than this one. This is our starting corner. This is very tight. Now I just want to say all of these I am going to put a little bit of caulk in just to eliminate that little thin line. And the same thing down here. A very very thin line. Angles are all perfect thanks to the SawSet Pro. Very nice. Here's the small gap that I was talking about that I would have to caulk. So I will caulk all of this. I'll caulk these edges and I'll caulk down through here because I have some gaps down here that are going to need to be filled in. And the same thing through this area, some gaps. So I'll caulk all of that here, top and bottom. Everything will get caulked. Been about 30 minutes and I've got most of this putty sanded. But I just use a sheet of sandpaper. This is 150 grit. Fold it so that I can clean the edges of the profiles if any wood putty got in there. And then I just use my fingers to sand this down. And if, if you don't wait too long, it'll clean up and sand very easy. The longer you wait, the harder it gets and the more difficult it becomes to sand. I'm ready to start caulking this and what I have here is just some painter's caulk, some white painter's caulk with a very small tip cut in the bead. I have a bucket of water, a rag, and a little paper towel right here. The bucket of water and the rag is going to do most of the clean up. But I will use my finger. So I'm just going to go through. I'm not going to get too carried away. A little bit of caulk on these miters. And I'm going to go through with my finger and just push that caulk in. Make sure it's pushed into the seam really good. Same thing here. Wipe off this excess with my paper towel. Now I'll get my wet rag and clean that up better. like that. And you don't want to get too carried away and try and go too fast and caulk too much because this stuff skims over pretty quick. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I know the exposure is not well. And here. So next what I want to do is go around the base of this window. Between the window all the way around. I'll probably do two sides, clean it up, and then do the other two sides. Just a very thin bead.
Now I'm going to caulk the top against the window and the other side. Same thing now, clean away our excess. Our damp cloth and pull through and just clean all that excess off. Get it off the window. Get as much. All we're trying to do is fill the little gap. Let that dry for an hour or so, and we're ready for paint. Now that all the caulking is finished, you can see that these corners have turned out very nice. The angles are very good. Everything lined up really nice. All that needs now is a little bit of paint, and we will be good to go. All right, guys, that's all we got for this time. If you enjoyed yourself, click on one of those two videos. They're going to pop up right there, and we'll see you soon.